story of Phineas Gage captures a significant period in neuroscience. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks recognized that there were different regions of the brain, as did Renaissance scientists, including da Vinci. Later on, of course, we had the phrenologists, who used to feel the bumps in your head to think about what was happening underneath it. However, it was not until the 19th century that certain regions of the brain became associated with particular functions. Historically, a lot of our understanding of how the brain works came from accidents. Often these were very cruel accidents of nature, like genetic mutations or incidents that damaged particular areas of the brain, such as strokes or surgical lesions, or wounds like Phineas Gage suffered. Similarly, with memory and language, a lot of progress came from autopsies on brain-damaged patients that revealed that damage to specific parts of the brain caused language problems. Neuroscientific developments can contribute significantly to our understanding of the human learning, including surface learning and deep learning. A lot of progress we have made started with Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease is a disorder in the part of the brain that controls motor functioning. For a long time, we treated this with drugs, but the doses have to keep escalating, and the side effects can become really unbearable for patients. Deep brain stimulation, on the other hand, uses a device a bit like a pacemaker to deliver electrical stimulation to particular areas of the brain that controls movement. This treats many of the debilitating symptoms like tremors and stiffness. This treatment has developed directly from understanding brain functions and animal models of movement disorders and is extend now extending into treatment of a range of disorders, not just physical disorders like action tremors, but also psychological conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, Tourette's syndrome, and cognitive disorders like dementia. This in turn has very exciting possibilities for the average classroom.